Uh, Welcome, everyone. The, the meeting will be, uh, the financial presentation will be made, and then there'll be questions and comments by people registered in favor, and questions and comments by registered opposed, and then questions from the council, and the final opportunity for new comments, and then the closing of the hearing. This, uh, in accordance with subsection 162.2 of the Municipal Act, Council of the Municipality of Boys Bay Morton will present its financial plan for the year 2023 at this hearing. Uh, Council will hear from any person who wishes to make representation, ask questions, or register an objection to the financial plan as provided. And there had been copies presented uh, available for everyone uh, beforehand and tonight. So. With that, I want to welcome you here, and I think we will uh, start with um, the financial plan, and uh, our CAO, Leo Poulin, will present the plan, and then at the end of that, we'll have the questions. So hopefully, it's, um, it will give you any of the information that you're seeking, but if not, there'll be an opportunity to ask. So, Leo, if you would. Thank you, Judy. Um, first off, if I can have everyone please turn off their phones or put them on silent. That would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> so this year we are very excited to share with you some of our highlights. First and most importantly, we're building a new modern outdoor aquatic centre. This centre will include two water slides, a tot slide, a lazy river, lap swim, and a gradual beach entry, along with the retrofitted change rooms and a standalone pump house, and uh, a new washroom shower facility for the campground. This is very exciting as our previous pool had served us extremely well for the past 55 plus years, but was well beyond its life cycle. The new center will include additional amenities that are bringing a lot of buzz and excitement to the community not only for us, for our citizens, but also will benefit our local economy and our tourism. We're also spending significant efforts on, develop, uh, on our development planning, specifically to finalize our new Boys of Morton development plan. This project is very important to establish a plan and vision for the municipality for the next 10 to 20 years as it relates to land use and development goals and policies. Also, um, with the new pool, marketing will be important, as well as working with the Ag Society to continue to see our recreation facilities grow for our community. Other highlights include uh, our year two of our water main valves project. We're also focusing on uh, and investing more towards downtown sidewalks. And then, as everyone has fully Experienced recently, the cost of living has spiked over the past 12 to 16 months, and by evidence, the consumer price index in Manitoba has increased by 7.675% in 2022. Also, it's an assessment year, which will benefit most residential and commercial properties, but foreign land assessment values keep spiking upwards and has grown by 14.2% from the previous assessment. More on this a bit later. Some other very important items the, that the municipality are taking in 2023 are our overland uh, flooding rehabilitation of rural roads, having over 100 spots in the southern portion of our municipality. Our priority this year will be to fix the overland flooding spots first and to provide regular maintenance gravel as annually scheduled and with the hope that we there will be some additional construction funds available later on. As well, we are undergoing further review of our rural wells for our agricultural sector. And with this, uh, we'll be exploring the idea of adding uh, to assist our rural ratepayers with providing raw water sources. And also, this includes reviewing our drainage plan. For CDC, we have hired a consultant to assist the municipality with setting and executing community economic development priorities for the municipality. 
for the municipal operating increase. We are very appreciative of the increase as it has been frozen uh, since 2016 and, and long overdue. But this increase is just keeping up with the inflation. Another priority this year will be the single mill rate transition. We are uh, being regulated to transition to a single mill rate by the end of 2024. So extensive planning will continue to take place in 23 with hopes uh, to have a special service bylaw later in the year. And finally, we're implementing and developing an asset management plan which aligns well with our focus of, on uh, financial planning and it being tied to our assets. In developing an asset management plan, this will assist the municipality in determining life cycle cost of each of our assets, renewal forecasting and strategies to maximize the value and longevity of our assets and services. One in very interesting note that was brought forward during my certification training for asset management was the fact that the average Canadian municipality deals with over 1,200 services. And why, we wonder why we are always so busy. Overall, our total budget for 23 is uh, roughly 5.31 million. Our budget has gone up roughly 15,000 over last year and up roughly 137,000 over a two year period uh, from 21 to 23. Our revenue consists of our school taxes, municipal taxes, and other revenue. The municipal taxes are 52.54% at 4.2 million. School taxes, which is an in and out, is 33.69% uh, at 2.7 million. And our other revenue is at 13.77% at 1.1 million. The breakdown for the total school taxes of 2.7 million is 2.34 million to the Turtle Mountain School Division, 99,000 to the Southwest Horizon School Division, and then we pay 263,000 to the province for the education support levy. It is important to note that a third of your tax bill is school taxes and we have no control over that. But in saying that, we are happy to see the province take steps to remove this financial obligation from municipalities. And how is the province doing that? Through the education property tax rebate. This was introduced two years ago and is changing again in 2023. This year the province has increased the rebate of residential and farm properties from 37.5% to 50%, but is reducing the education property tax credit advance from $437.50 to $350. Although the system is a bit confusing at a first glance, overall residential and farm properties will receive a 50% rebate and all other commercial properties will re remain the same and receive a 10% rebate on the education property taxes paid. Even though most properties will pay the municipality more towards school taxes due to the reduction of the edu education property tax credit events, when you do factor in the rebate, your total amount due will decrease, which is welcoming news for higher assessed properties. Our other revenue is at 1.1 million this year down about 165,000 from last year. It's important to note that in as recent as 2017, uh, the average annual other revenue for our municipality was under $690,000. Since this time, we have made strong uh, efforts to improve our sources of revenue and we have had lots of success. And we will continue to look at ways to generate additional sources of revenue. This year, the municipality is receiving 316,000 from the Department of Municipal Relations for our operating grant, which is great news as this had been previously frozen since 2016 levels. We are receiving an urban policing grant of 160, 186,000. This one has been frozen for some time. 
Our federal Canada building fund is at 138,000. The Handy Van Grant is at 28,500. Our career start is 6,500 and Dutch Elm is at 3,000. For a full listing of our other revenue, please refer to page two on the financial plan. For our expenditures, our total is $5.31 million. 76.9% is towards municipal services, which is just over $4 million. Our general reserve is at 9.65%. 500 uh, is 512,000. Our capital is at 369,007%. Debenture debt charges 3.73%. It is 198,000. The Canada Building Fund Reserve is at a 338,000 and is at 2.59%. And finally, our allowance for tax assets, which is at $7,000 and is 0.13% of our budget. Here you see our expenditures by service area. Our transportation services budget continues to see record high levels of our overall budget coming in at over $1.8 million. Next is our general government services at 681,000. Reserves is next at 651,000. Fiscal services next at 568,000. Rec and cultural services next at 512,000. Next after that is our protective services at 499,000. Economic development services at 300,000. Environmental Health Services is next at 185,000. Uh, environmental Development Services, 62,000. And then finally, our Public Health and Welfare Services, it comes in at 28,000. Going into each of our service areas a bit further, we start with our General Government Services. These services equate to 12.8% of our budget and includes legislative, admin staff and office, our legal expenditures, audit fees, grants, liability insurance, <laughs> assessment and taxation. New this year, um, I've included on the bottom left of this presentation, and, and that is uh, when an assessed property value of 100,000 would pay towards the service. Important to note, uh, residential properties are assessed at 45%. Agricultural parcels are assessed at 26% and commercial at 65%. And in this area, uh, an urban resident assessed at 100,000 would be paying $179.67 towards general government services. Rural residential property at 100,000 would be paying 81.94 and agricultural property $54.17 and commercial $244.54. Again, these are all based on $100,000 uh, assessed properties, and you'll see it throughout uh, the, the, so the slides, upcoming slides. Our protection services is roughly 9.4% of our budget. This area includes policing services, fire protection services, EMO services, building inspection, and animal control. Our largest impact this year is our policing cost, up over 13,000 from last year's budgeted. Transportation services, our largest budget at 34.2% is up 129,000 from last year. This service includes the staff, vehicles, graders and equipment, repairs and maintenance, the workshops, Fuel, road construction, gravel, street repairs, road patching, street lighting, to name a few. Some of the items of note for the municipality is that we are allocating 75,000 towards sidewalk improvements and the focus is to continue to rectify safety hazards in the downtown area. We are also allocating 122,000 towards urban roads and 636,000 towards the rural roads. Important to note that because we are a rural community, we pay our fair share for mobilization and hauling costs 
and these costs are included in these numbers. One very important priority for the municipality is our rural roads. Historically, we have rebuilt one mile of road per year versus now by doing construction ourselves, we are uh, building and repairing five times more roads on an annual basis, huge progress. Additionally, we are aware of the inconvenience and ask our repairs, so please be patient as we provide our maintenance and construction programs. We are also making improvements on communication concerning, uh, di concerning disruption of service in hopes to alleviate the not knowing component. And as previously mentioned, this year's priority will be to fix all the overland flooding spots first and to provide uh, maintenance gravel as scheduled. And then uh, there would be some hope to have some budget left over to do some additional construction work. The next service area is the environmental health services. And it is 3.5% of our budget. It's at 185,000, down about 7,000 from last year. This area includes our garbage collection, our landfill, municipal wells, and recycling services. This year, additional planning for our rural municipal wells will be taking place in hopes to assist our uh, agricultural operations during times of need. Next is uh, public health and welfare services, which is at 0.5% of our budget, and it is up about $1,000. In 2013, two cement ribbons will be added in the cemetery, and future planning will be taking place in regard to expanding the cemetery to the south, as we are nearing capacity at the current location going east. Our environmental development services is 1.2% of our budget and is slightly up from last year. This area includes our trailer court, general land assembly and Dutch elm and tree pruning uh, and removal. In our trailer park, we are dealing with some safety improvements to our pedestals, as well as have increased uh, the monthly rent and are in the process of remedying outstanding collections of rent and utility utilities. This has been long overdue, but is certainly necessary. Economic Development Services is 5.7% of our budget, and it is up 85,000 from last year. Economic Development Services includes our staff building incentive program, marketing and branding, beautification, town sign and billboard, vet services, rural weed control, water resources and our conservation. This year, we have some exciting news with updating and finalizing municipalities development plan, which was last completed in 2009. We have also added a new budget line for consulting services and with a consultant's assistance, it will assist to set a plan for community economic development. And finally, our building incentive program has seen a significant increase as we have added many high assessed properties to our tax roll, which is promising for our stability and growth of our municipality. Recreation is 9.7% of our budget, and this area is up roughly 14,000 from last year. Recreation cultural services include the Parks and Recreation Board, Civic Center, Parks, Playgrounds, the Arena, Pool, our Library, the Legion Hall, our Museums, and, and Cultural Arts. Besides adding a new pool this year, we are also putting money towards road and site improvements at the campground. And our largest impact on this service area is our museum budget. This year, we again encountered flooding issues and are working with contractors to make permanent fixes to avoid this from happening in the future. This increase is 20,000, otherwise the service area would have seen a decrease this financial year. 
Fiscal services includes our capital expenditures, transfers, and debenture debt charges. It is at 10.7% of our budget, down 204,000 from 2022. In 2023, um, the primary capital expenditure is our pool project. We are very excited about this addition and all the support we have received to date. And in saying that, we are delighted to share with you that we have met our fun fundraising goal of $200,000 as we are nearing $225,000. Great to receive such positive su support and encouragement from our local businesses and as well as our ratepayers. And if you have not donated, there's still time and I encourage you to stop <laughs> by the office. Because we are now at the home stretch of the project, we will be posting small, exciting social media posts to engage the community and the excitement of the new facility up into the grand opening. Upon completion of the project, we will provide another recreation newsletter to recap the highlights of the project. Our proposed capital items in 2023 include, first off, our, as previously mentioned, our outdoor pool, which we are still on target for a grand opening of Monday, July 17th this year. And again, stay tuned for more exciting updates and announcements. We're also investing in a rural grader attachment. This uh, groomer attachment has the ability to make significant progress towards cutting icy roads and cutting washboard. Although it is a slow process, uh, but a worthwhile one, as this attachment is far superior than the carbon tip grader blades that we had tried in years past. We are also into our third phase towards the campground road upgrades. The road and site upgrades was first introduced uh, and started two years ago and uh, has been very much needed to meet the demand of larger campers. Next, there will be some drainage improvements to ensure the sites are not flooded out. Another exciting uh, capital item is that we are also improving our seasonal decor by upgrading our Christmas lights for a third year of an original <laughs> four-year plan. This year, the Christmas lights uh, are to begin replacing the Christmas lights to the north of the rail road tracks. Again, long overdue and is bringing new excitement to the festive season. For our utility, our main priority is our water main valve insertion project. We started this project last year and completed 10 valves. This year we are aiming for another 12 to 14 valves. More on that shortly. Our re reserves account for 12.3% of our budget and include the general reserve and the Canada building fund reserve. The Canada Building Fund Reserve allocation amount, which is a funding commitment from the federal government, is at 138000 And for our general reserve, we have allocated 567000 Our 23 general project is, of course, our new pool. And for our Canada Building Fund, uh, our project is the water main valve insertion project. With the completion of 10 valves in 2022 and 12 to 14 valves this year in 23, we anticipate that we will be able to isolate six sections of service area instead of the current one section that we are now able to do. Last year we reviewed and anticipated that this project would take two to three years to be able to isolate in quadrants. And unfortunately no more sections could be completed in our first year than the current notice that we had sent out during our most recent water outages uh, due to the water main leaks. Upon completion of this project, we will be able to isolate smaller sections of the system and not have to shut off a such a large section of our utility system. Also upon completion of this project, we will be able to begin uh, the replacement of main valves via the traditional replacement method at a much lower cost. Good news, this year our debenture balance is down 75000 to 198000 as the greater debenture was paid off in 2022. 
Next to come off the books is our urban landfill and rural landfill uh, debentures maturing in 2031. And they have annual payments of 37,000 and 22,000. Next to venture maturity after that is the residential development phase two, maturing in 2032 with an annual payment of 58,000. And then maturing in 2036, we have the recycling debenture annual payment of 36,000 and the residential development uh, with an annual payment of 43,000. And it is also maturing in 2036. When we look at our debenture debt at year end 2021, we had 1.96 million. In 2022, that reduced by 195,000. And now with our 2023 payments, we are further reducing another 154,000, bringing our total debenture debt balance to 1.6 million. For our special services, we are in the last year of year five, of five, sorry, of uh, our urban protection special service bylaw. And this year there is a slight increase to uh, 430,000 in 2023. Cost per parcel is $211 and the remainder of the 249,000 is based on assessment. We also have the urban waste special service, which is at 66,000 total by, par by per parcel levy and the remainder by assessment. And then we have our watersheds. This year we were paying levies in the amount of 15,000 towards the Cirrus River Watershed District and then 7,800 into the Pembina Valley Watershed District. Before we get into our tax impact for the year 23, I wanted to provide an update on our utility budget and the overall financial health of our utility. First, we have some important items to note to, for our utility. As previously mentioned, our, um, our first priority this year is that we are in the second year of a multi-year water main valve insertion project. Installing more valves and in strategic places allows us to improve our position in the event that we can shut off a section of users versus shutting down the entire system. Next, as part of our annual lift uh, station maintenance program, we have some improvements to make at the Broadway and Ray Street lift stations this year. Another important upgrade will be the filtered to media. This component is an integral component at the water plant and will benefit our water filtration. And finally, the municipality is again planning to apply to the Public Utilities Board uh, for a total, uh, for a 3% increase via the simplified rate method application. The 1% utility increase to water users, 1% increase to wastewater, and 1% increase to service charge will be similar will be our similar application to that in 2022, if approved. On this slide, we have Schedule 8 of our audited financial statement, which is the schedule of financial position for utility. First highlighted in yellow is our liability, specifically bank indebtedness. Important to know that as recent as 2017, our bank indebtedness was over $750,000. And also important to note that this was addressed in 2017 and a plan was formed and we we're very happy to share with you that we have paid off this balance in full in 2021. Some great news. And now our focus fiscally is to pay back the 1.1 million that is also accumulated over the years and is due to the general operating fund. The next line in yellow is our net debt line. This line reflects if we liquidated all of our utility financial assets and financial liabilities, and it reflects the financial health of our utility. Our net debt utility position was close to $1.5 million in 2015, and it reached a low point in 2017 at $1.579 million. 
But again, in 2017, the municipality had taken some tough decisions to rectify this net debt position. Since this time, you see in 2020, another reduction, uh, sorry, our uh, net debt position improved to just over 1 million. And in 2021, another reduction in that to 918,000. We we're anticipating a similar improvement in 2022 as we did in 2021. And our goal is to have this utility net debt rectified in this council's term of office, ultimately turning it into a net asset position. This, been has, this has been a long time coming, but we are proud of the decisions that we have made to flip the script on this one time, deeply concerning, fi poor financial position. If you take a look at uh, this statement, which is our consolidated statement of financial position, from our 2021 audited financial statements. First, you see our financial assets. In particular, our cash position, which is slightly over 2.2 million and a significant increase over the past few years. Then in highlight, you again see our bank indebtedness. And as just previously mentioned, it had reached uh, a low in 2017 of over 750,000 but is now paid off. Important to note that as of year end 2015, our consolidated position was just over 2.5 million net debt position. Yes, the utility was 1.4 million of it, but the remaining million was a part of our general operating fund from both the former town and rural municipality operations. As of year end 2020, we are finally out of consolidated net debt position as a municipality, and now in a net financial assets position of just under 500,000. That progress in that time period equates to a $3 million improvement. Thanks to strong efforts in applying for and receiving over a million dollars in grants, as well as making significant efficiency improvements to procedures and services. The last section that's highlighted is our consolidated accumulated surplus in which we sit at just over $14.2 million. In 2023, our total utility budget revenue is at 898,000, up roughly 49,000 from last year. The consumption breakdown of our revenue is 537,000 from residential use, 102,000 from industrial use, and 22,500 uh, via commercial and bulk water sales. The reason our 2022 actuals were down was because it was a wet year and as such, lower demand for water usage. We still have one rate rider recovering operating deficits from 2014, 15, 16, and 17. And this year, will, uh, this rate rider will end in the year 2024. For our utility expenditures, the total water supply costs are projected at, to be at $407,000 this year. Our sewer collection costs at $90,000 and a total of $898,000 as our total expenditures. It is important for our community to recognize that we had been in a very poor financial utility position as recently as four years ago. With the significant rate increase that took place in 2019 through to 21, internal administrative improvements and also through successfully receiving grants from outside sources to upgrade our core utility infrastructure, the utility position is improving. This year, we are recovering $212,000 of previous deficit. We have a small transfer to our utility reserve and have some water plant component upgrades on our radar this year. Now this year uh, is an assessment year and some of the highlights for 2023 are as follows. The single family residential dwellings, both rural and urban is down 0.2%. Commercial is up 0.2% and the largest impact is our, on our farm or agricultural property class with an increase of 14.2%. Overall, we had a, 
7.2% uh, increase in our municipal taxable assessment. Important to note that if you feel that if your property is incorrectly overstated or assessed, we encourage you to contact the assessment office immediately and begin the process of discussing the reasons why and ultimately rectify this. If you are unable to come to an agreement with the provincial assessment branch, there is an appeal process and that can be found online or please feel free to stop by the office and pick up an application form. And finally, I will conclude the presentation by going through four examples of the tax impact in 2023. First, the urban residential property uh, is an urban residential property assessed at 200,000. Last year, the municipal portion of taxes for this property was $2,587.36. In 23, factoring in the average assessment property change, slight, again, slightly down at 0.2%, the municipal portion will decrease to $2,529.34, a decrease of about $58. Next, uh, let's look at an example beneath it. Uh, here we have a rural residential property assessed at $300,000. Last year, municipal taxes for this property was $1,973. In 2023, uh, the municipal portion, again factoring in the assessment, which is a decrease, will decrease to $1920, a total decrease of about $53. Now let's look at uh, an urban commercial property that's assessed at $100,000. 2022 the municipal taxes portion was $1944 and in 2023 uh, the municipal portion again factoring in the assessment will end up in a marginal decrease to $1,910. This represents a decrease of roughly $34. And the final example, we have a farm property assessed at 400,000. Here in 2022, the municipal portion of taxes for this property was $1,520. And now in 2023, factoring in that average assessment, the municipal portion will increase to $1,692 a total increase of $172. Overall, our tax increase this year is 4.5%, but because of the assessment impact, it has shifted uh, significantly to the farm properties. Now we need to discuss the school taxes as the changes are fairly significant once again this year. Going back to the urban property assessed at 200,000, Last year in 22, school taxes were $1,015. And you can see uh, next to it, they received uh, a $438 education property tax credit advance. Add in the municipal taxes and the total tax bill last year would have been $3,165. Now last year with that rebate check, which was 37.5%, um, the property would have received a rebate of $380, a net total of uh, $2,784. Now, if you look at the school taxes in 23, a slight decrease to $957. And also with the education tax credit advance is now three, from $438 to $350 you'll see your total tax bill will decrease by about $29. Again, the province has increased the rebate this year from 37.5% to 50%, and, this, and so this property owner will receive a rebate check in the amount of $478, a net total of $2,657. Now let's look at the example beneath it, the rural residential property assessed at 300,000 in 22, they paid $1,523 in school taxes. They would have received a $430 tax credit, uh, so their tax bill was $3,059. Factor in that rebate check, they would have received $571, and a net total, they would have paid uh, $2,487. 
In 2023, this property owner will be paying slightly less in school taxes at 1435. Again, with that property edu education property tax credit advance of uh, $350. So the total tax bill with the municipal taxes would have been three, uh, $3,005. This year with that 50% rebate, the rebate check will be $717. And so this property's net total will be $2,288, a decrease of about $200. Now let's look at that urban commercial property assessed at 100,000. In 22, uh, school taxes were $1,299 with a total tax bill of $3,244. Factor in the 10% rebate check and this property owner would have received $120, $129 rebate and the total net amount was $3,114. This year, um, school taxes $1,226, total tax bill $3,136, rebate check of $122, and so that net total is $3,014, a net decrease of about $100 from last year. And in the final example, we have a rural farm property, again assessed at $400,000. Last year, uh, this property would have paid $1,173 in school taxes, the total tax bill would have been $26.94. They would have received the rebate check of $440 and a net total of uh, would have been $22.53. This year, this property will see the school taxes go up to $1,265. And when factoring in uh, the rebate, uh, they would have received a $632. Uh, and a total net increase uh, of uh, $2,325. 2300, uh, $2, Again, I have not factored in farmland school tax rebate, but similar to residential properties, the initial credit will be reduced, but overall a rebate check representing the applicable amount will be issued by the province. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leo. Uh, well done. And I think it, it covered, certainly covered all of our financial plan. At this time, I will look and see we had in favor. I'll take questions or comments in, uh, by registered in favor at this time. No comment? Um, questions and comments uh, opposed. Any questions from the council? Um, this will be the final opportunity for new comments. We're open to have anybody's comments. Yes? I have a couple of comments I'd like to make, Madam Chairman. First of all, uh, I was interested to hear that, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> um, that the uh, cemetery is expanding. And I uh, suppose the reason for that would be that people are just dying to get in there. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, a tremendous amount of work goes into this planning, and I'm, uh, I'm impressed by the way it is all laid out and, uh, and the way we see it. Um, a couple of things I'd like to mention, but first of all, just if I may digress, it's nice to see a little bit of humor in the minutes there once in a while. <laughs> uh, and I noticed on February the 28th, um, Judy Swanson's report <laughs> states, and I quote from the minutes, I looks very professional, but it could be pricey. <laughs> <laughs> Read into that what you wish. <laughs> Not sure what content that was. Yeah, I don't know what that was for, but yeah. <laughs> I think there was a bit of a funny wording in yours too. So okay, no, that's not. I, 
probably am the one with the largest sense of humor here. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, of course, read in the local paper that uh, there was a big increase in the cost of policing. Yes. Uh, which I'm sure is a surprise and difficult to deal with, except for the fact that <clears throat> uh, I was pleased that council uh, passed bylaw number uh, 2022-4, which was the uh, 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 bylaw pertaining to the use of municipal road allowances. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got to come up with, what, 50 odd thousand dollars? Well, <clears throat> according to uh, Dean Broker, uh, there are about 998 cultivated acres in this municipality um, from which the ratepayers, uh, taxpayers get, or the municipality gets no revenue from. And uh, even at, while well, rental rates roughly $80 an acre, you've got $80,000 there. So I'm interested in knowing what steps council are taking to uh, initiate the uh, uh, the bylaw that uh, was passed because oh. there's there's certainly revenue there that uh, is needed right now absolutely uh, first of all I would like to thank you personally for some input to that bylaw I know there was a working group that got together and Rob unfortunately can't be here tonight but others on this council sat and worked on that. It, uh, it's certainly not going to just sit. Uh, we have a committee report. We're going to do committee uh, meetings to discuss whether we grandfather or whether we don't grandfather and how we're going to proceed with it. But we're one of the few municipalities that have that passed. And uh, just an FYI, I've shared that with other municipalities we meet um, quarterly or every two months with the western municipalities and they're very interested and so it isn't going to be left unturned but we need to make sure that we do it right and we do it in, with all the background that we need so we're working on it it's not an easy it wasn't easy getting it to that point and we know the work that was involved um, but it, it, it is brought interest from other municipalities as well. So it, it isn't there yet, but it's going to be. You know, I, I, I know there's a lot of work to getting everything yep. set up. Yep. But, um, and obviously you're not going to get the 50000 this year. No. Uh, but no. um, <clears throat> we'll try and behave ourselves out on the highway and other places so the police aren't too busy. But uh, would you hope to have it in place for the 2024 year? Would that be unreasonable? I don't know if it will be quite ready for then, but certainly it will be preceded. It will be moving forward. Um, there is just, it's, it's a big difference. It's a huge change to the rural um, thought process and what's happened in the past. So uh, certainly the discussion has been brisk, and uh, we have been getting some input from other municipalities to see where they are with it as well. I think uh, certainly we have to move on it to what degree we move and as quickly as we move, that's up to the council. And uh, we are meeting, we have, um, like I said, we have meetings with transportation, we have meetings with rural, we have meetings, and on those meetings that is on the agenda. So. It's not an easy process, but this council is not, uh, we don't sidestep difficult things. We have never sidestepped difficult um, um, issues, and uh, I'm proud of, of what they do, and I'm proud of the work they, that has been done on that. And you're right, there is some, certainly some funding that could come to the municipality from those ditches, okay? The only other comment I would like to make is thanks very much for going to all this trouble of putting on this meeting for four of us. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, it will be. It's videoed. 
it, it will be online, and uh, I, you know, I understand there's some kind of a hockey game on tonight, so I don't know <laughs> if that's uh, part of it. But uh, I do appreciate your interest, all of your interest in this. It's, I think it's important for everyone to understand the work that goes into a financial report and goes into the budgeting process. We've spent a, a great deal of time, and there's a lot of things that we have to, the, the pros and cons to it. So um, I appreciate the council and the effort that they've put in uh, into this, this planning, and certainly to our staff and to Leo in particular, I really like the way he presents the budget, the, the financial statement. I think it's, it's important that everybody be able to understand it. So are there any other questions? If not, I will ad adjourn the meeting. Thank you.